the final two categories of demand shifters we're going to consider are expectations and network and congestion effects. Expectations highlight the interdependence between your choices and what you are thinking about what might happen in the future. Network and congestion effects highlight the interdependence between your choices and what other people in a market are doing at the same time. So let's first think about expectations. And let's again think about gasoline demand. And so you are the consumer who's sitting at the beginning of the week deciding how much gasoline should I purchase for the week. And let's suppose that your gas tank is half full right now. And so that means that you could use your, your car to go to certain amount of activities, right? But at some point during the week, if you don't fill up right now, you're going to have to fill up later if you want to be able to do all of the different um, activities that you set out for the week. Let's suppose you're sitting with a half tank of gasoline, and usually what you would do is you would wait to fill up until you're almost empty. But you've been, you were sitting in the car, and on the radio you heard that a new gasoline tax is about to go into place tomorrow that's going to increase the price of gasoline. What would you suddenly do? All of a sudden, the marginal benefit of filling up now is higher relative to waiting until you're almost out of gasoline because you know that the price is going to be higher in the future since that tax is going to come in and increase. And so if you believe that prices are going to rise in the future, you may all of a sudden go out and not only fill up with two gallons for to meet your needs for the rest of the week, but you might fill the gas tank as far up as you can in order to have gasoline at this cheaper price to do more activities over the next week or two um, since you know that prices will increase. And so expectations, if you believe that the prices of a good will increase in the future, that could increase your demand today because your marginal benefit of filling up today has suddenly increased. If you believe that prices are going to fall in the future, so let's say, for example, you know for certain that prices will be lower two days from now, you might decrease your demand today, use your car for less driving today in order to stretch the fuel that's in your tank right now in order to make it to two or three days from now where you can fill up at a lower price. And so expectations about the future, whether it's positive or negative, um, in terms of your price expectations can affect your quantity demanded today. The next effect are congestion effects. And these highlight, again, interdependencies between your choice and everyone else's choices in a particular market. A congestion effect makes a good less valuable when more people use it. And so in our gasoline example, this is simply going to be congestion or traffic, right? And so when we know that traffic is getting worse in a particular city and driving all of a sudden is much less valuable because in order to go to the same place, it's going to take a lot more time to use our car because there's more traffic on the road and therefore it might be worthwhile just to take public transit, that congestion effect. So the more people that are buying gasoline actually decreases our marginal benefits of purchasing gasoline. So we would model that as a congestion effect. When traffic gets worse and worse, our marginal benefits go down. And therefore, at every single price, we would purchase a lower amount of gasoline, or in this case, cars. We would also purchase um, fewer cars. The second one is a network effect. And network effects are the exact opposite of congestion effects. Network effects make a good more useful as more and more people are buying it. And we're seeing that in the electric vehicle market, at least in the United States. So in order to charge an electric vehicle so you can drive it, you need charging stations. And if you go back five, 10 years ago, there were very few charging stations. You could install one at your home, a few workplaces had it, but there weren't many places like gas stations that you could pull into and charge up your electric vehicle. 
However, as this market has grown over time, the um, and the demand for electric vehicles has increased, the density of charging stations has also increased to where it's much easier to find charging stations if you own an electric vehicle. And this map highlights different cross-country trips you could make using an electric vehicle and have a charging station all along the way. And here in the middle of the country, in the United States, you used to not have many of these charging stations at all. And so as we get more and more people buying electric vehicles, there will be more charging stations since um, investors will, uh, will invest more in these, this charging infrastructure since they know that they can sell more electricity to cars. And therefore, other people's marginal benefits of purchasing an electric vehicle is going to increase because you know that you can fill up and use your car to go for longer and longer distances because you'll have that charging capability. And so we've seen now how your marginal benefits of consuming goods are going to depend on what you think about the future, what other people in a market are doing, the prices in other markets when prices of complementary goods, and also your own um, preferences and your own income. And so this highlights all of the different types of interdependencies that we covered last week.